All right, let's begin our next chapter in our review for final exams. Uh, today we're going to talk about chapter 11, which is data analysis and statistics. Um, this is a continuation of the chapter 10 and chapter 11 review guide. Uh, the first topic we're going to talk about is finding the mean, median, mode, and range of a data set. This is question 16, so don't be alarmed by this little part right here that's not part of the data set. So if I'm going to find the mean, I'm going to add up all the values. So 16 plus 12 plus 11 plus 15, 14, 12 plus 11, plus 12, plus 17, plus 10, add them all up and divide by the number of values there are. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, there's 10 values involved. And so the answer to the mean is 13. Median is a little more complicated. You actually have to take all the numbers and put them in order and find the number in the middle. Since there are 10 numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, these are the middle two numbers, and you would find the average in between both of those since it's 12 and 12. The median is 12. Mode is the number that occurs most often, and the range is the difference between the highest number and the lowest number. Next, we're going to talk about standard deviation. Um, if you were to do it with the chart and not do it with a graphing calculator, you're going to do each number. the first column and in the second column you're actually going to take the average of those numbers so you're going to add them all up and divide by how many numbers there are so the average in this one is 27.2 then you're going to subtract so you take you subtract each one of those, so 23 minus 27.2, and you get negative 2.2, you get negative or positive 3.8, 9.8, and negative 7.2, and then you're going to square each one of those, so 4.2 squared, 2.2 squared. Now it's a small chart here for me to work with. 3.8 squared. And then 9.8 squared. 96.04. And then the last one squared, 51.84. Then take the last column, do the average of the last column, and the square root of that. And that will give you your standard deviation of 6.08. Next one, you will be given a bell curve with the percentages. Um, I'm going to write those down here. So in the first column, or the first one here is 34%. The second one here is 13.5%. 2.35% and then 0.15%. Same thing going on the other side. For the for 2000 local high school students the, uh, took the ACT, the average ACT was normal distributed with a mean of 19.6. The average goes right in the middle of your bell-shaped curve. Each one of those marks then represents one standard deviation from one standard deviation away from the mean. So I'm going to add 2.1, get 21.7. Add 2.1 again would be 25.8. Add it again would be 20. Would be sorry, 23.8. Apologize there. 23.8, and then 25.9. Going the other direction, you got 17.5, 15.4, and 13.3. Now, the question asks, what percent had an ACT between 19.6 and 23.8? So you're talking about these two areas. And so you add those two up, you get a, to a then to B, 47.5%. B now. How many of the... 2,000 students should be expected to have an ACT score between 19.6 and 23.8. Since 2,000 students took the test, 
and 47.5% of the students were in that area. You multiply those two together. Reminder, this is 0.475 when you go to multiply. So you're talking about 950 students. Scores on the first semester final exam were normally distributed with a mean of 83 and standard deviation of 6. If they received an 87 on the score, find your z-score. This will be given to you on your final exam. So we got x minus u over standard deviation. What that means is you take the value minus the average divided by the standard deviation, and that will give you a z-score. In this case, the uh, score you received was 87 minus 83 divided by 6. So this has a z-score of 0.666 or 0.67 when you go to, or excuse me, 0.7 when you go to the z-score chart. Again, the z-score chart would be given to you. So you go to the z-score chart and it's going to say 0.758 zero and so you would say 75.8 percent fall below you or you are in the 75.8 percentile now if they ask for a question like above you then you would have to subtract from 100 percent so this is actually the value below you not above things you're going to need to know let's talk about each one of these for a second population versus sample a population uh, deals with everybody in a particular data set so if you talk to everybody in a uh, in a question then you're talking about the population of that question sample obviously means then you're only going to talk to part of the people in a particular group uh, param uh, a parameter again dealing with the statistics or dealing with this uh, if you have a parameter that means you have every you have data from a population if you're dealing with a statistic you have data from a sample now different types of samples that you need to understand uh, obviously there's random um, basically if you put everybody's name into a hat and drew out a number you're talking about a random sample self-selected is if you send out like an email and then only the people that respond to the email that would be a self-selected survey systematic means there's a rule uh, a rule is basically like you're going to talk to every fifth person or you're going to talk to every other person or something like that in which you have a system in which you are asking the questions stratified and cluster are kind of go together you're talking about groups so these two you're going to talk about it, talking to a group you divide everybody up into groups. Stratified mean you divide them up into groups and then random, randomly select people from each group. Cluster would mean you divide them up into groups and then you talk to everybody in one particular group. Data collection, um, experiment versus observation versus survey versus simulation. An experiment means you're forcing something on somebody or you're forcing something on and to see what would happen. Observation is you're stepping back and just watching. Um, survey, you're asking questions, you're talking to people, you're basically uh, dictating what's going to happen again. And a simulation means you're trying to do something. Sim uh, you're trying to simulate a real life situation. Uh, in a simulation, most of the time you'd want to use that one if it is something dangerous. And so you want to simulate it so that you don't get anybody injured. Determine whether a numerical is a parameter or a statistic. Remember, a parameter means you have to talk to everybody in a particular group. A statistic means you're going to talk to some of the people. So 93% of all Honors Algebra 2 students take Honors Trig Pre-Cal. Now, is this particular situation talking to all the Honors Algebra 2 students? Then, yes, this would be a parameter. Reason you would give for a parameter, you're talking to all. A survey of 235 customers in a mall prefer to do their shopping on Black Friday. This is a statistic. Again, statistic is only when you're not talking to everybody. So then this is because you're only talking to part of the customers. Next one. 
You want to determine whether your people in the neighborhood like a new park that is being identified. Identify the sample, whether it's self-selected, systematic, stratified, or cluster. You mail out a survey, and only the people that, that return the questionnaire. This would be self-selected. This one is biased because uh, maybe only the people that really care about the situation are actually going to return the survey, and therefore you're not getting a true sample of the people. You ask every four house in a neighborhood, this would be considered a systematic. Because you have a rule, you're going to talk to every fourth house in a neighborhood. Identify the method. A researcher records the number of people that use a coupon at a local restaurant. You're stepping back, you're watching, you're just recording the number that actually occurs. This is considered an observational study. A teacher gives test A to half the students and test B to the other half of the students to see which test is easier. This would be considered A, because you're putting this on people then, an experiment. In a survey of 735 students, 81% said they prefer final exams at before winter break. What is the margin of error? Another formula that you would need, um, the square root of N. Um, that formula will not be given to you. So plus or minus 1 over the square root of 735. N is the number of people that you actually survey. And so this would be a 0 0.037 or 3.7% margin of error. That concludes our Chapter 11 on data analysis and statistics. If you have a question, please make sure you talk to Mr. Bone or Mr. Smith.